coming now. So I, sorry, I had to move because there was too many people coming into the other room. I'm outside now where there are like random cruise boats. Not driving, but like boats do. Sail. Boating. There's like boats passing along and they're playing music. So there's like, it's very entertaining out here. Um, sorry about the break. Okay. Let's get back into it. Okay, so we left off here. Uh, here. We were making our interactive web app and we stopped. All right, so we're, we're making this, but so far we've stopped just here. And what's cool about this is that, like, I'll just show you. When I when I had written, am I recording? Yeah, I'm recording. When I had written it the, the first time, because I was just sort of winging it, um, it looked like like this one. This is not how to do something, but this is because uh, we've separated our concerns and as a result, we can programmatically generate the HTML for our website without having to, without having to um, worry so much about sort of having like way too much HTML in our code. So, it's another boat. So uh, let's continue. So we have like basically two things that we need to do. We need to make this interactive to the extent that like when we hover it, we get some animations. Um, we also need to, let's, so we need to do three things, right? We need to make it like hoverable. We need to make it do something when we click it. We also need to make it beautiful just to finish this. How's the music sound? So, sec. Okay. This is the most interesting coding live stream I think that has ever existed. Okay, so I hope you're still here. So, so, so we have three things to do, right? we have, in another live cast at a later time, we can refactor this maybe into components, which is another feature of view. We can also make it responsive so that we can resize it and view it on any device and get sort of a great experience. So, okay, let's think about this. What do we want to do next? Let's bind the background color to the currently active um, color that we're selected on. So like if I click this, if I click it, then the background needs to change. Okay, cool, so we know how to do that. Basically, this is a full screen single page application, right? This is how it's full screen, which means anytime we set the background, the entire web page's background will also change. So we can use the special colon style, this guy, to bind a color based on whether we're clicked or not. But I think I have a problem because we don't have knowledge of which color we're clicked on until we go inside of here. So like, this is sort of tricky. I could, hmm. How should we do this? For each far color in colors. Um, can you guys hear that? Is this? Um, so we want to iterate the color, but the current color, when we click it, wait a minute. What if we call it a function? No, 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 that wouldn't work. So we're iterating over the colors. When we click it, we want to grab that one's background color. The, this is the text. So let, let's do this. These are bad names. Um, instead of value, let's do emoji. Emoji and then color. Is that a good name? So we'd have to change that and we'd have to change that. And then this would be emoji. Okay, so that worked. 
No, it didn't. The background. Oh. Oh. Right. Okay, so what we can do is set the back. We can. I'm wondering if we can set. Because like in CSS, you can set content. And so we're in view land, which means this would be emoji. I don't know if this is a good idea. Okay, it didn't like that. Um, we can also do is this. So we're using um, these like sort of special view things. There's one that we can use, I believe, called like vtext. Let's go to view mastery, this one. vtext is like another one that we can use. Uh, this is not that helpful. V text, V text. V text. V text? V yeah, V text and H2. Okay, cool. V text. Oh, it's simpler than I thought. Okay, cool. So. So let's set the V text to emoji. Okay, so that would work. Um, it's equivalent to doing it here, but either one would work. So we can set the text, or we can actually set HTML uh, too. So okay, so let's go back. These have better names now, which means it's much easier to understand. Okay. Sorry, I'm getting confused. So we care about this one, the color. If we click this, we want to inherit the color. If we, no, if we click this, we want to emit the color. So we might need to do we might need to do some advanced view here. Um, okay, let's do at click um, console log. Hello world. Okay, so in theory, any one of these color boxes that we click will print a log statement using the click handler. Okay, cool. So let's try that. Uh, okay. So click. Console log not defined during render. Okay, so let's just let's make this like debug. So we're gonna make it a function, and then we're gonna go down here and we'll make a method. So we'll do methods. Yeah, so methods. And then with that, wait, that's wrong. What is? Oh, sorry, it's the wrong place. Yeah, methods like this methods okay and then here we make a function we'll call it debug so we do debug function and then I'll do console log um, whatever the value is which we're passing down whenever we click so if we click we're passing down a string which is insignificant. We just want to do something every time we click. Okay, so we can just do like clicked. Okay, so now we have a feedback loop. If we click something, we can we can see that we clicked it. Cool. Okay, so that's working, right? That's great. So okay, so let's continue. So if we click it, we now have a way to suggest what the background color would be, because. Um, this box represents each one of these boxes. So if we click it, we can store the color in data. So far we haven't like used data in any significant way, but if we do start to use it, this will get easier um, because we'll have a state. Right now we do not have an explicit state. We have, we like, we have like an implicit state, but we don't actually set the state anywhere. So like let's do, Let's do this, like we'll make a value. So we have colors and then let's also do current color. Um, 
which we'll set as nothing to start, but we're expressing that it should be a string. Okay, so so anytime we click, we um, we want to set current color. So let's just try like let's this current color is equal to the value being passed down. We'll bind it to that, and then we'll do console log this current color. Okay, let's see if that works. If you guys have questions, just ask. Let's try this again. So if we inspect, go to console, click, 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 click. Okay, so we're getting undefined. But why? Oh, because we don't have a defined value. Um, I wonder if we can pass down color on the same line. Uh, does it make sense? No, anytime we click it, we want to propagate. I don't know, let's try it. Okay, so view is like much more intuitive than I would have imagined. So now we have a model for caching the background color when we click it, which is like super important. So we want to update, basically. So have a, we'll change this from debug to update, and then um, this is just like a debug feature that we can leave on. So like anything we have tagged with debug, we can go back and just delete it later. So um, I don't I, something might break if we make this color. So I just want to check. Okay, that's fine. Is it? Is it? Yeah, it's fine. And then. Can I change this to color also? Or is it too many? It's a little bit ske sketchy to do that. Uh, let's see if it worked. Okay, so we're good so far. So now we have, I think like active color might be a better, current color is bad, but active color. Okay, so let's do this. Um, let's say this, this active color is equal to the incoming color. And then, um, I don't think I, well, let's do this active color. Okay, let's try that. So now we've successfully, we've, we've binded this function to the, okay, cool. I didn't, I didn't know we could do that. Ooh, okay, so going back to here, this is, that's all we had to do, really. Like we, we wrote like a simple function as a setter and a getter, um, right? So like this is our setter, and then this is like our getter. But I feel like we can combine these into like one rule. So like let me just check, like setter, getter, automatic view. I feel like there's a way to do this. Hmm, we're not using components yet. Uh, I think computed properties do this for you. I remember reading something about this. Setter. Okay, computed property is basically a function. Right, so we can use computed here. Okay, so a computed property is essentially a property defined with the getter setter functions. Just like a normal when you use it. Oh, right, okay, this is really important. Let's turn this expression. Right, let's try. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we're going to convert this <clears throat> into a computed property so that it gets a setter and a getter automatically. So we still need to keep some like data to keep the act the the active color. But we can use computed instead, in theory, um, to access it. So I think the way that we do this is really subtle. I think we say like active color is now, a, I think it's like we say it's like a function now. Um, something like this. And then like, let me check the documentation. So computed full name function return when you only need a getter. Is essentially a property defined. Okay, so this is their example for a normal computed option. So they have, okay, so, so here. 
Oh, okay, I was getting ahead of myself. There's a syntax to this. So let's go to, let's go to here. So this is the, op this is, okay, so active color has both a get and a set. So we can just, okay, so, okay, so let's just like, um, I don't know, maybe active color, and then this would be like, this is the getter, this is the setter, so like if we get the active color, then just return, this is just like return active color. Oh, you know what? I actually have a really good idea for this. Um, let's come back to this to add this, because in theory, we don't need the hash, so this would be, a, this is a great example of like, we can insert the hash using, using a computed property. Um, so that's one thing we can do. And so the setter, anytime we set it, we want to set this, this active color is equal to color, and then we just go down to the console log like we did before. Okay, so let's get rid of this stuff. Okay, now I need to make sure that this can have the same name, because I don't know that they can. Because, oh, yeah, so these are not the same name. So let's start not assuming this will work. So let's do like, let's do like test, test active color is a computed property now. Uh, this is not, oops. Ah. So I'm gonna convert these. Okay, so we can't make too many assumptions here. So we need to be careful. So like, let's say, let's do like test active color is the name of the property and it has a getter and a setter. And that would mean that we go back into our code and instead of saying update color, we're gonna say test active color. Sorry about the music. Okay. Let's try test this active color with the current color, which would do, which would set it, and then if we return it, okay, so, okay, so let's try that. Um, okay, so go here, refresh it. Something broke at line 94. Something always breaks. Um, oh, we have two of these. Let's let's fix. Okay, let's try that. Okay, getter is missing. For, okay, what happens if we click it? Not a function. The getter is missing. Oh, wait a minute. This needs to be this active color. Getter is, okay, so can we click it? No, we can't. Getter is missing for computed property test active color. Test active color, it says getter is missing. Does it make sense? Let's go to the documentation. So their getter has this function return, this active color, that seems fine. Set function, new value, set, close, 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 close. Computed, computed. Um, I'm gonna wing it and just try to try this. Uh, so let's just make this this active color. Okay, will that work? Getter is missing. Why do I get that? Let's search it. Property. Stack overflow can be so painful. Um, um, holy shit. This is terrible. This is terrible. It's dark out here. Lizards. Call active color, active color is function that can return 
color, the active color, 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 color. Ah, oh, it's got to be something simple. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so clearly we can't give these the same name. So let's do compute, which means, oh, oh. I wonder if in their HTML, if they're calling first name and last name instead. Wait, they never, oh, they don't have some data. What am I talking about? This is sorry, this is frustrating. Um, so active color is defined. We're going to do uh, uh, is active color. Okay. Is okay, let's try that. Okay, so we only have one error now, we don't have two. Getter is missing for computed property is active color. I feel like What does that mean? So here they don't have get and set, but they do here, and there's a comment between them. Am I doing something stupid? Nope, not. Setters optional. Full, wait a minute. If this doesn't work, we can go back. I just really wanted to use computed. Sort of get used to it. Uh, let's try this. Getter is missing for computed property. Let's try the view developer. Nope, it's not going to work with us today. Let's try this one more time and then we'll give up. Oh man, view is new enough that it's actually hard to sometimes find answers. All these are from 2018. Computer can only hold functions. Hmm. Okay, we can go back. We can do one more thing. Um, let's get the NPM version of view because this will allow us to use the, um, the view developer tools. So let's try that. So let's go and set this one. Okay, so that's good to know. Man, it is still not registering. Okay, fine, we're on our own. This active color, get function, this active color, turn this active color. Um, view is, view is missing for computer. All right, I think we need to give up on this technique. But I'm like so, Frustrated about it. Hmm. Getter. Let's let's let's, let's change our, our attitude. Let's do getter, setter, view. Uh, what is this called? Computed. Let's, uh, computed. Let's try. Let's try this. We're gonna we're gonna make this work. Okay. Let's. Um. 
There's the documentation uncomputed. Oh, what? Theirs looks different here. They're not using the um, the dollar sign, which is like weird. What? That's weird. Why is there two different ways to do this? I'm, like tripping balls over here. Yeah. Okay. So here's okay. So here's the wrong way to do it. Where's the? Okay. Here's the. Okay. So let's compare them. Computed setter. Whoa. What's the difference between computed properties? Oh, what? This isn't the actual view website. What the fuck? Where am I? What the fuck? Guys, this is not view. This is like some other version of view. What the fuck? Holy shit. I, the, I just got trolled. Fuck, man. That is so disturbing. I feel like I got like fished in an email. Okay. Now we know why get wasn't defined. Um, okay, so, so we want to work with this template. Okay, so go here. We got our optimism back. Put this here. Okay, cool. Okay, so we have a getter, our setter, and that goes in here. I wonder how much time has been wasted in the universe on like JavaScript bugs. Okay, cool. So now we just update this. Um, um, so I, be I bet this is a different version of view. And I bet this is the current version of view. I bet that's why they're not the same. Okay, cool. Let's try this. Okay, we get her, we have a setter six color and it don't need this oh, keep it for a second okay let's try that <clears throat> okay so let's do is active color is the name of the data but then the computer property is active color so the semantics are better and then we can do active color. Okay, let's try this. I think it's working. No, it's not. <laughs> um, yeah, it's recursive right now. This is why it had a stack overflow. So we'll do this. Let's just make this color. This color, color, color. Color, color, color. So of color. Yeah, okay. Active color is not a function, but it has a setter, which means maybe we need to use a different syntax. Let's do like, let's do like, let's do like this. So that's what a setter looks like. to tell you guys my excitement right now. Yeah, you were totally right. It was a mirror of an outdated version. So it had dollar signs when it shouldn't have. And now it works. Cool, okay, cool.
I'm glad that that is over because that was painful. Okay, cool. So now we understand computed, we understand setters and getters, and now we can do something interesting, right? We, this is repetitive, this little bit right there, so we can actually use the computer to insert that so that we can keep our data as basically clean as possible. Cool, okay, so let's go to here, and then we have our setter, we have our, okay, we know it works. Um, all right, fantastic. Let's put these next to each other. Okay, and then I'll just, eh, looks dumb. Okay, so we have our getter or setter. We're artificially, wait a minute, I think we have a problem now. Oh, so this should be retrieving, hmm because we're iterating over the colors and the colors no longer have the hashtag in front of them, which means we can either put it artificially here, but then we're writing double logic. Um, oh, wait a minute. I think we can just retrieve it like, like, a, like a, we have an active color. Because this is a this is a getter now. Um, so like maybe we can do, it's the whole point of a getter for active color. But this is gonna be the same color. Yeah, it's not gonna work. This might, but it's all. <laughs> right, it's giving us whatever it's, yeah, it's giving us the current state. So if we click it, everything updates and that's also wrong. Okay, so what we can do is we'll set this back to color. And then we only set the active color, which means we don't really need a getter. I believe getters are optional. Hopefully we can do this. Okay, I think we can, and then let's just inspect. Uh, the console. We don't have a debugger, do we? So let's do like console log uh, this color. Okay, let's see what happens if we do that. So now, if we click it, we have stored in state using a setter. <laughs> this doesn't need to be computed. This can just be a method. Because if we use computed, the whole significance is that it's caching something. Um, which is okay because if we I mean this is totally not necessary but if we click the same color twice that's basically like not it shouldn't do anything which a method would but I think a computed wouldn't so let's see can I do can I just get rid of this and do this instead I'm not sure okay let's try that um, but it has no setter. So then we have to treat it like a function instead because it's not a setter anymore. Let me just try that. Doesn't like, the, wait. Yeah, it doesn't like that because this is computed. So computed with a setted setter would look like this. So if this works, we'll just leave it. Um, and saying, okay, you don't have a getter. Okay, screw this, we're doing method. Uh, and we're gonna do set color, and it's gonna start here, and it's gonna set the color, print the color, and then get, and then like be done. Okay, clearly too much complexity for us right now. So we do set color to color. Okay. Mother. <laughs> Property or method is not defined on an instance during render. Methods, Jesus. Okay. We need to set methods with an S. That was the problem. Okay, cool. So we're good. We can go back, run it. 
we click it, now we have a model for updating it, which means we can set the background color not using anything fancy. We're just going to retrieve the current color. So that means that our background color is reactive. So we don't have to worry about scope anymore. We don't have to worry about this for loop. We're basically free from it because we have an internal state. That's a lizard. We have an internal state. And now we can say, we can say, um, it's getting a little hairy. Let's do style, color. And then this is the background, right? And then, and then, let's put this on a separate line and then this on a separate line. So, so I'm sure this isn't the only way to do this. Okay. Um, it's probably complaining about this. I think I need to do it like that. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So our app is now storing the active color in the background. It's saving it to a variable and we're making the background reactive because of it. Okay, so obviously we need to put a white background. So this is the card, and the background of the card is always white. So I feel like we could use CSS here to make this cleaner. Um, I don't mind the center, but I want to set the background color for, oh no, no, I only want to set it once, sorry. I just want to set it um, here. Wait, what? This is a reactive background. This is a static background. So this would be background white. Let's try that. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so now all we need to do is add some CSS animations um, to get the, the, like when you click it, they like rotate and we need to think about the gradient and the shadows too so <clears throat> so okay so the shadows and the, the animations are easy all I care about right now is the gradient because that seems like it's not intuitive so for the gradient um, how did I do it here For the gradient, oh, gradient was a method that returned the computed, oh, cool. And then the actual gradient over here, background linear gradient. Oh, okay, so this is just CSS. Okay, cool. So basically, um, there's more code that we can do. I think I'm going to wrap it up here because the rest is really just CSS, uh, like shadows and stuff. Um, but the point is that this logic controls all the functionality to create the same web app. Um, the only difference really is we have like shadows and gradients and like nice stuff, but that, that is like CSS. It's not really view. So I'm going to leave that out for now. Sorry, it's not as like beautiful. But I promise there's nothing you can't do uh, with Vue. I promise that, like everything that you see here, there's like nothing, there's like no surprises. Everything else is just CSS. Right, I'm going to wrap this up because there's a lot of people out here and I'm like inhaling their smoke. But yeah, I hope that, that this was useful. I'm going to turn off the recording now.